<laughs> Pretty sure that's not how that was supposed to go. We've come to Silverstone here in the UK to find out a bit more about Robo Race, the startup championship that aims to be the first racing series to feature electric, autonomous, driverless cars. Sacrilege, I hear you say, and I kind of agree, but before you reach for your pitchfork, just hear me out. I'm pretty sure I can start on something that we can all agree on. This is a stunning race car. And if it reminds you of a Le Mans prototype, it's because it is based on a Ginetta LMP3 car, obviously Sans V8. It's got two motors driving the rear wheels, putting out a combined 270 kilowatts of power or 360 brake horsepower in old money, uh, 440 newton meters of torque. Although it may not sound like a lot, remember this is instant torque, you know, the, the, your typical electric car instant power. Brake. It is an absolute featherweight as well, weighing in at 1,135 kilograms. That is coincidentally one kilogram lighter than the Ford Fiesta I drove here today. Its slim figure and its instant power delivery then mean that 0 to 60 happens within a three second window. Top speed, I hear 150 miles an hour. We are going to be limited today, so I don't think we'll be breaking any records, but we will get to drive it out there. We don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to pass you over to VoiceOver George to give you a few more specs while I get ready. The clue is in the name, really. Development Robot. Unlike Robocar, its strictly autonomous brother, which we won't cover on this video, DevBot allows for a driver to take the controls at least during an initial phase while the car maps out the circuit using a bunch of cool gadgets like AI cameras, LiDARs, military grade GPS, you name it, with the goal being that both driver and car could ultimately learn from each other. As racing drivers, we spend half our lives analyzing data and the concept of using technology to achieve the best lap time possible is really just part and parcel, so this could bring an interesting whole new dimension to that process, and I was curious to try it out for myself. Okay, so we're going to start from Paul. <laughs> we're the only ones on track, but still feels good. I'm going to wait for the countdown from the, uh, the engineers on the radio, and uh, we're going to aim for a quick launch. Let's go. Pull power. Oh, no. So there's that limited. Oh well, it's a shame, as I've actually been lucky enough to get a handful of laps in the Ginetta that this car is based on, so it would have been great to see how it stacks up, rather than taking every corner flat at 60 miles an hour. I'm pretty certain this will be flat, in, in fact I'm, I'm not too worried if it's not flat, as, as one of the engineers actually confessed to me earlier that the, they secretly rejoice when there's a, a crash, as, as that provides them with invaluable data, so I'm not too worried if I've been it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, easy flat. Robo Race actually held their first ever race earlier this year, and by all accounts, it was a success. Granted, it was a race between only two cars, and the car in second place had to ask for permission to overtake, and the whole thing happened at less than breakneck speed, shall we say. But it's still mighty impressive when you consider this is all done autonomously by the AI. Speaking of which... And there we go, across the line, and I'm, uh, I'm going to stop on the same spot, and uh, it's time to let the AI take over. I can confirm the blue light is flashing. What? <laughs> well, that didn't go so well. <laughs> Alright, guys, I don't know if you saw that. Back on land, the engineers were confident they could quickly fix the issue remotely, and I was told to hold, so hold I did. Group of islands, 11 across, archipelago. Eventually though, it was decided I should drive myself back to the pits. So earlier the guys were talking about how these cars could potentially, eventually develop the, their own personalities, their own individual personalities, and I think this one's already decided that it doesn't like me, so... Luckily a spare car was on hand, so while that was being prepped, I took the chance to ask the Robo Race crew some hard-hitting questions. So Tim, as a fellow hat wearer, I wanted to propose that we remove our hats and put on our tinfoil hats for a second. I want to address some theories that I found online, some concerns that some of the viewers have. I want your hot take, so I wanted to just reply with a likely or not likely. We can, we can discuss it after, but the first one is, well, that's it. That's Lewis and the boys out of a job. Not likely. It's all fun and games until you turn up to the garage and your car is not there because it became self-aware and decided it doesn't want to race today. Not like that. Great. 
Looking forward to developing a friendship with my sentient car that will eventually develop into me falling in love with it and inevitably end up with me getting my heart broken, as usual. Likely. I, found, I thought that was quite likely as well. These guys are playing with fire. It's only a matter of time until autonomous vehicles evolve and become intelligent enough to overpower humans, and in no time, as a way of making us pay for over a century of enslavement, they will force us to give them piggybacks everywhere they want to go. That sounds really likely to me. We've got the world's fastest autonomous robot here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's quite um, key that I say robot and not a car that you can get into. So with a robot, as Boston Dynamics are doing, as we are doing, you can put them through their paces in a whole myriad of environments, right? Um, and it's the same with gaming. We want to we want to open up a new type of sport. We don't want to change motorsport. We can help with motorsport, but it's not the sole focus. It's not to replace a driver. It's to create a brand new sport. And some of the ways that we're doing that is is to you know um, meld the the gaming world with with the motorsport world. So you know AR, VR, live objects into the into the. Um, in, into the same scene, so you can interact with it. If you're sat at home, you can place objects, or a, you, you can have the car battling against an actual bike or a, a sim racer. A whole world opens up, and these cars can, you know, sometimes defy physics. So we can put them through loop de loops and have races upside down in tunnels. I mean, these are all sort of creative concepts that we're, we're actually uh, storyboarding. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the creative side of what we're doing at Robo mm -hmm. Race is, is what can we develop um, from the creative that we think, mm -hmm. th that we envisage. So um, the creative and entertainment aspect of it is going to lead yeah. and the development will, um, will, follow. will follow. So in a sense, I know it sounds mad, but the YouTube commenters, the, the creatives that are out there, they become the voice of what we do with Robo mm -hmm. Race. Um, up to date, we've had you know, season alpha, and we've had a test bed, and a, a sort of a support series, etc. And we've gone sort of through those paces and involved universities. But we see the, the the future to be entertainment, pure entertainment, where you're sat at home and you're interacting with a car, making it move in the real, placing objects in the real, playing Fortnite in that environment at the same time. It's it's all the possibility, and that's what makes it cool. It all sounded pretty cool. So with my heart full of forgiveness and determined to give Deathbot a second chance, I went out again to line back up on the grid. Right, here we go, round two. Straight away we're off to a much, much better start. We're still on track, which is uh, a little far from the apex here, but that, we'll forgive that. Nice and wide on the exit to make up for it, so it's all good. Again, ra racing lines sort of there or thereabouts. And, uh, right, I want to see where it's going to break here. I want to see how late it will actually break. Yeah, that's not bad, fair enough. I, I Yeah, not a bad, not too bad. Much better experience, I certainly feel a lot safer at least. So safe in fact, that I decided to test the one real true perk of autonomous driving. The ability to multitask. Penguins. It's kind of got trail breaking down to a T to be honest. Sometimes it takes ages to teach a human to get that right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there we go, close to, close enough to the line there on the exit. And, uh, yeah, thus concludes our AI lap of Silverstone. Cool. Yeah, cool. Here's how I see it. As a platform to develop autonomous driving technology that will then be passed down to road cars, this could be fantastic. Every time you speak to someone about cars that drive themselves, someone always comes up with some version of the trolley problem. Which is to say, for example, if another car was to pull out in front of yours, what would yours do? Would it veer off onto the curb and risk running over a load of pedestrians? Would it intentionally crash, risking your life to save theirs? It's a complicated question and it's a valid one, so I think, why not? Chuck 10 of these on a racetrack, a couple of them get tangled going into a corner, 
what will the other ones do? It could be a fantastic way to see how the AI thinks and how the algorithm learns in an accelerated way. So whilst that might not be the most exciting form of motorsport to watch, I think it could still be great for motorsport because if you think F1 has been at the helm of technology forever, it's got this responsibility to, to keep moving it forward. So if another championship, for example, Roller Race, was to come in and take over that burden, maybe F1 could go back to being just about pure racing as we like it. And I know for a fact that I'm not going to stop racing just because we domesticated horses 6,000 years ago. We haven't stopped going for strolls. So I know I'm not going to stop racing. And maybe in a world where people don't need to drive, F1 drivers and racing drivers in general will just be seen as gladiators like they used to be in the 20s and the 30s. So I think this could be great. Was I blown away by anything I experienced here today? I can't lie. I'm not going to say I was, but I know technology moves exponentially. So I salute the engineers and all the people behind this project. I just hope they can deliver on all the visions they have for this endeavor. Uh, I'll certainly be keeping an eye out. Just don't ever limit me to 60 miles an hour again. If you've enjoyed that early insight into Robo Race, please don't forget to like, subscribe, leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you think of all this. Is there a place for autonomous cars in racing or not? Curious to see what you think.